Hello, it's Rob from Fountain Pen Journey. I have got a Pen BBS pen review for you today. Um, <clears throat> in fact, it's three pens, so you're getting three for the price of one here. It's this pen right here. The Pen BBS 471. Um, yeah, it's a pocket pen, no doubt about that. Uh, and the reason that I have three of these is because these pens are available in simply beautiful acrylics. Really, really lovely acrylics. Other pens are available in these acrylics from Pen BBS. So if you really like the look of any of these colours or finishes, then certainly have a look on the um, Pen BBS Etsy store, um, Pen BBS eBay shop, if you have access to that in your country. Um, yes, so the 471. What's it all about? Well, it's a very small pen. Um, this is the Niangao finish. N-I-A-N-G-A-O. And to me, it looks... This, this is a lovely material. It really is very, very attractive with deep um, greys, pale greys, blacks. Lots and lots of chatoyancy really really attractive material very very attractive very reminiscent of certain black marbles um, and minerals such as larvikite things like that uh, really attractive very 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 nice material altogether so this is the pen bbs 471 gm g for gold so it's got a gold accent an M for the medium nib. So this one came with a medium nib. There are, there are, they are available with other um, nib sizes. For example, I'll show you one in a minute, the 471, which has got a fine nib. However, I'm not going to do a writing sample of all of them because I find that pen BBS nibs, my own personal opinion, everyone's going to be different. Um, I find that their nibs are usually quite dry and usually quite fine anyway. So I don't generally see much of a difference between a fine pen BBS nib and a medium pen BBS nib. I think they're all very much the same. Um, so anyway, Niangao finish. I shall now show you what else there is. So it's an unboxing as well. So when I said you get three for the price of uh, one, here we go. So, cardboard sleeve, slides off, pen BBS box, there it is on the lid. Nice packaging from, uh, from pen BBS. Magnetic closure, and inside we have got a photograph of his cat. Always nice to have little cat photos included in these pen BBS things. And here's a hint to the filling mechanism. A glass eyedropper is included with all of these pens. <laughs> they are eyedroppers. So this is the Pen BBS 471SF silver, silver finish, and F for fine. This is the cloud finish, which is a sort of semi opaque, translucent, swirled. Somewhat chatoyant, not not very. There is a little bit of chatoyancy in there. Uh, that's the cloud finish. Oops, which I shall just pop over there before I move on to the next one, which is... I'll try and keep these things in some sort of order. Chuck that over there. Right. So in this one, we've got the Pen BBS 471, all the same model. Uh, 471 77GM, G for gold, M for medium. Now this is the Storm finish, and this is absolutely stunning. I'll have to say that I'm going to try and put a, uh, a thumbnail on this video of the true colour of this material. Uh, because it's a very difficult material to photograph. This looks like it's bright royal blue with chatoyancy. It is not. It is a lovely, 
really lovely sort of dark teal blue um it's like almost like a peacock sort of blue and this is coming out as very very blue under the camera i have tried another camera that was almost the same i tried an iphone camera that was the same so really hard to uh, to get a proper indicator of what this uh, blue is um on a video it's a really attractive color there is a lot of chatoyancy swirls depth all sorts of stuff in this uh, in this acrylic really beautiful material um and i will also say at this point if you go onto the pen bbs etsy store sometimes you might see things and this goes for quite a few of their models um for example if you are searching for this pen after watching this video and you search for pen bbs 471 you may suddenly find that there are two different prices for the same pen in the same material now what happens is sometimes when they're turning the acrylic the acrylic pen, the acrylic rod just isn't actually very nice it's, it's just not very good so you may find that you get cheaper uh, versions of exactly the same pen which seems a bit weird but that's what it is um, i paid top notch for the storm finish and the nangao finish um, because i thought actually you know what it's so beautiful i don't want to go for something which doesn't have this depth of color or the chatoyancy things like that i want i wanted the full package so i paid full price for that rather than get the uh the cheap seconds if you like um so let's have a look at the pen now i'm going to use this as the uh demonstration for the parts of the pen because it is a bit of a weird one i love pocket pens but this throws me at times i've been using one as an everyday writer for a couple of months now and quite honestly i'm still not used to it because it is you'll see what i mean in a minute so let's pop this over there here we go right so cap threaded up here why is the cap threaded up there well i shall show you in a minute there's the pen this is it we have threads on this gold ring here now this is where it gets very unnerving it's a screw to uncap pen so there we go so you can see here that the barrel is exceedingly short i mean like ridiculously short let's um let's pop that there let's get a caveco i sport for comparison where everything's rolling away right okay let's let's do a side by side comparison with the Caveco Sport. So these are the two pens capped. So you can already see that the pen BBS is even smaller. I mean, it's almost, it's a good two centimeters smaller. So tiny, tiny pocket pen. Um, uncapped, I mean, quite honestly, I don't even know. I, c I can write with the Caveco Sport unposted for short sentences, but this is just fiddly um as you can see it's uh i'll try and wedge that there so that doesn't roll away as you can see two centimeters shorter than an unposted caveco i sport so yeah really really short you're going to need to post this pen um let's post the i sport and let's post this now this is where the screw on the end of the cap comes into play so that screws onto there and you get a pen which is maybe about the same size try and line these up completely i'd say may maybe a millimeter maybe two millimeters longer than a posted ice sport when it's capped so you pretty much have to uh cap no, sorry post the pen bbs 471 so let's just take this back to basics again. So you've got a very short pen. Um, it's a nice thickness. I mean, diameter-wise, this is nice and girthy. 
if you compare it with something like the Lamy All Star, yeah, it's wider. So it's 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 a thicker pen. It it's a good good girthy pen. So unscrewing the cap, let's first off do the turns. One, two, nearly three turns. So pocket pens which have unscrew caps usually drive me absolutely mad because they're useless for taking quick notes. Three turns is getting on the excessive side. Um, but then you're forced to screwing the cap to post. So let's do a quick... You see, this is the other thing. You know, you have to fiddle around. So, one. So, it's just about one turn. Let's go for this again. So, one. One and a bit turns to one cap. On post, rather. Getting confusing because there's so many different screws and things. Um, but it's a decent length. Very, very attractive pen, which now has this gold or silver band in the middle of the pen. Um, but the weirdness starts here. Your cap is open. It's If you're going to post a pen, common sense is, well, you take it from the bit where it's protecting and housing the nib, and it fits somehow over the back of the pen, but it doesn't. You actually end up putting the front of the cap onto screwing that into the band, which is another thing. Sometimes you may actually unscrew the whole thing and have the pen like that. Because this can be just completely screwed off altogether. Don't lose this because you, you need it. <laughs> So that screws on there. So then it's really difficult to tell where the end of the pen is. And half of the time, you see I'm trying to screw the wrong end on there now. Half of the time. Can you see why these annoy me? Half of the time you're trying to screw the wrong bit of the pen onto the wrong bit of the pen. And remember, this is an eyedropper. So, this also unscrews. So, it's an absolutely nerve-wracking experience when you pick up this pen as to what you're about to unscrew. Are you about to unscrew the barrel and empty two and a half millilitres of ink? Because that's roughly what this holds. Two and a half millilitres of ink everywhere. It's a possibility. And if you want to live on the edge, then this is possibly the pen for you. So, that screws on nice and tight there. So you can, you, you can see I'm unscrewing and unscrewing all sorts of screws and threads going on here. They must have had a field day with the tap and die section of Pen BBS when they were designing this pen because it's like, how, ma how many threads and uh, things can we actually get onto a pen? So there's one, two... Three, four, five, six, seven. Seven in total. Seven threads in total in one pocket pen. It's quite stunning, really. Um, I mean, obviously, if you're a complete weirdo, you could get several of these pens and also do this. So there you go. You've got a Lego pen, um, which is quite a decent length, and if you wanted to, you could. There we go. If you felt like it, you could do that. If you felt like it, you could also do this too. I'm being silly now, but, you know, sometimes it's fun to enjoy these pens and make a whacking great thing. So look at that. It's, to be honest, it's not a heavy pen, so that's actually quite comfortable. Um, so you can do all these things. Right, which one's which? This one goes back down here. <laughs> See, you're starting to get the uh, get the gist of it now. So, let's just unscrew this and have a look at steel nib, 
Pan BBS nibs. They're always very good quality nibs, even though they do write a bit dry. Um, oh, I'm unscrewing the wrong bit. Right, unscrew this, and you've got a barrel which you then use the eyedropper to suck up a bit of ink of whatever colour you want. Dribble into there. There is an O ring on the threads just above the threads on the section so it will seal fairly well but i would still put a little dab of silicone grease run around the uh, the threads there just to be sure you've got a decent enough seal now i've had absolutely absolutely no issues whatsoever with um with any sort of leaks on these pens so as an eyedropper goes definitely recommended it's all you can do you can't you can't put a cartridge in there anyway but as eyedroppers go, these do not have the issues with, I don't know, burping and leaking like other eyedropper pens I've used. So let's go back to the Niangao finish, which is inked up and ready to go. Pen boxes everywhere. Right. Doing some sketching for my upcoming Journal with Purpose video. Oh, I will point out one other thing. There is no clip on these pens. But thankfully, and this is, this is a huge plus for this pen. This is why I don't like screw pens. No clip. But you notice it's not rolling anywhere. That's because they've actually had the foresight to facet to um, edges to this I don't know cap band barrel band whatever you want to call it so it is faceted so it doesn't roll which is brilliant because this pen would drive me absolutely mad if it rolled everywhere so this is the pen BBS oops helps if I'm actually on the paper 471 all of these pens, same model, Pen BBS 471. This one that I'm doing the writing sample with is the GM and the Niangao finish. So it's medium nib, Niangao. I would say that there is a little bit of feedback with this nib, but it's very smooth and very, very pleasant. I've done absolutely no nib adjustment whatsoever to this. So really, really good quality nib. And the other ones, all these 471s have been exactly the same. They've all written well. They've all, you know, been smooth, everything else. So no arguments at all with the nibs. Really, really good. Um, the ink... I had to find an ink that would actually match this pen, which, to be honest, with this sort of Nahangao stone effect type chatoyant finish, it was really difficult. Didn't want to use just black, didn't want to use anything too weird. Um, but this is a Pure Pens ink, which is made by Diamine. And this is uh, Pure Pens Clanberries slight now for those of you not in the UK or not in Wales Hanberis is in Wales and it's a slate producing or an old slate producing region um, slate is a really popular stone where it's locally uh, locally produced in Wales Yorkshire places like that um, so this ink matches the pen quite well because it is a very slate grey ink and I really really do like these little pens even though 
you have to spend quite a lot of time unscrewing them, re-screwing them, things like that. But at least they don't roll. However, there is also something which I would like to uh, draw your attention to in these boxes. And this isn't something that I've used, but it's a brilliant little thing. And it's this. You get a rollerball insert. So you can take out the fountain pen nib and the feed and insert this instead so that you have a rollerball which you can then use with any fountain pen ink. Now rollerballs of course use water-based uh, inks, same as fountain pens. So it's, you're not going to get the, if you like, water resistance of ballpoint pens, but rollerballs will use fountain pen ink. So you do have that option. Now I have not tried these because I love, I love my fountain pens. Quite honestly, I think that this could be a nice little experiment, but I'm not sure how you clean out a rollerball. It's a different beast to a fountain pen. It's not a controlled leak, it's a controlled leak with a little ball in the end, a tiny little thing that writes. Um, and I know what a rollerball pen feels like to write with. I, I, I don't need to uh, need to experiment too much with it. But it's a nice touch to actually get that inside the box. So you get quite a lot for your money, because these are not expensive pens. If you want to know exactly what these things weigh then I'm going to weigh it so that you've got some idea, because you've seen the teeny tiny size of it, uh, but I think it's worthwhile noting the all-up weight, because that's how you're going to use it, of 17 grams. So not heavy pens, um, definitely a pocket pen, but actually quite a comfortable girth. Nice, handleable size, no clip, obviously. Um, but it doesn't roll, so, you know, they've actually put some thought into that. And they're very, very good writers. So I hope you found this video useful. I hope that you found this, if you like, introduction to the other uh, Pen BBS acrylics useful as well. <coughs> Excuse me, losing my voice, time to stop. All right, well, thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you next time. Bye.